Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Beep67 here, back with a brand new video on this channel. Now, I'm not going to be recording a video on Super Mario All-Stars for today. Maybe not for a while because, you know, I'm a little busy with life and that kind of stuff. But, I do want to tell you guys about this program called RetroArch. Um, now, this is the emulator I personally use for playing Mario All-Stars because I don't have an actual SNES. But what's cool about RetroArch is it's very customizable to your own, you know, like what you personally want. And it has a lot of cores or emulators built in within it. So you can use something like Citra for 3DS, like I have Mario 3D Land. I, I don't know where the image went. Uh, let me just see if that works, maybe. Hmm. I have Mario 64 for the Nintendo 64. I got this is actually a ROM hack of New Super Mario Bros. for the DS. I just wanted to see if I could use custom thumbnails, and as you can see, it worked. So, next up, we have the original Super Mario Brothers. Again, I just wanted to test out if you know if it would work and. Of course, maybe I will do uh, a series on this, but I already beat the game. I don't really want to go through it again, but there's a chance. And then this is where Super Mario All-Stars is, and of course, Super Mario World for the SNES. And then these two are PlayStation, which I don't have a game for PS2, but it's endless possibilities, really. As you can see here, I have Final Doom. Um, so that's kind of a broken game i really would recommend playing it i mean unless you're good at like the old doom games on playstation but so in a quick overview of what's on here if you already have it installed but you don't know some features well so the first thing that i like is the online updater now the online updater is only available on the i guess from the website or anywhere else that you can get it not the steam version i believe the steam version is a completely different website where you have to manually install cores but through this way you can go to the online updater you can go to core downloader and it's going to fetch all the cores that are available and as you can see there's an endless amount of cores so you got the atari you got bandai you got you know all this crap you even got doom on here you know that's crazy you even got doom and then you got a ton of crap. Uh, you know, you got all the Nintendo, you got DS, Citra, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, you even got uh, Dolphin, which I think is kind of broken, but you know, you got a ton of stuff you can use on here. Really, it's great. And you got Sega, you got uh, Sony, the PlayStation. Uh, I believe it goes up to the PSP. There is no PS3 core, but that is, I would, um, I think there's a reason why they don't have it, but, and they even have Wolfenstein 3D there. So that's one thing, and another thing you can do is do update assets and all that crap, but my favorite feature personally, which makes this emulator just, it's a quality of life feature, I guess you could say. It's not really anything groundbreaking, but it just makes it more personalized so when you go to settings you can go to user interface and then you can go to appearance and then you can go to themes and you get a ton of themes here you got basic white you got basic black it looks like the nintendo switch which i think that's what it was going for nord grove box dark this is usually the one i use but i've been using a different one here's boysenberry you got hack in the kernel which kind of looks a little goofy twilight zone this is the one that i was using dracula Solarized Dark, you know, a ton of great themes, and this one is more, you know, minimal, and, yeah, and Selenium, which, uh, you know what, maybe I will stick with Selenium, I don't know, but, there is one more feature, if you go to Drivers, and go to Menu, you have four different options to choose from here, and, basically, what it does, I'll show you, so, if you select XMB, which, for my PlayStation users, you probably know what that is. Now you'll notice that nothing changed yet, but what you have to do is you're gonna have to go to main menu, and then you're gonna have to restart RetroArch. And then, as you can see, once you have 
you know, restarted. Now you can see it's the PlayStation 3 uh, or maybe PS4, but I think this is more PS3. You know, it's really cool. And you got all your cores right here at the end. And of course, you want to change back to the other one. You go to Drivers menu, and then you go to Ozone. Ozone is the name of the one that's like the Switch, but there are a few other. The GLUI, that one's like it's the basic one that's on the mobile version, I think. Um, and then there's RGUI. This one is pretty cool. Let me show you it real quick. So I'm going to restart, and and as you guys can see, this is like some sort of like retro. That's I assume what the R stands for. And, you know, if you want to go to your playlist, of course, you can see that, I don't know, I don't know if you saw that, my screen flashed for some reason, but as you can see, you got all your different cores here, and really, it's just cool. You can launch your games and that crap, so, oh. I want to show you the installation process now, so let's get into that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to RetroArch.com, which that is the website where you have to install it. Now you're going to see all this crap and whatnot, but what you want to do is you want to go to Downloads, so Download. And these are the supported platforms, and you can see there's a ton of them, even going as far back as to Windows 98, 95. Vista XP, I mean, I don't know why you'd be using any of these. I mean, don't get me wrong, they were, I guess, good for their time. But I guess if you're using, like, a virtual desktop, I wouldn't see how you're still using Vista or XP, but maybe I'm wrong. Linux, which I hear Linux is actually really good, I guess, for programmers, people who have to customize their computers. And there's Haiku, Raspberry Pi, Android. So if you have a phone, or I, I guess, like, a and Android computer. I don't know how that would work, but you can get it on Android, which is a little better because it's a little easier, I guess. iOS slash Apple TV. Me personally, I have the iOS version for Game Boy games, but I don't really use it that much just because I have a, you know, a, uh, I have a 3DS with custom firmware that I can use to, you know, emulate Game Boy games, so I don't really use this anymore, but. Then you can do Mac OS. There's Xbox. I don't know how that works. These ones are coming soon, I suppose. Well, I guess there's also for PlayStation 2, PS Vita. PS4 and PS3 are coming soon. For the Switch, um, the, the thing with the Switch is you have to use, like, like a, an unpatched model of the Switch, which I think was the release Switch, but I don't know. For the Wii U, it's as simple as downloading something and putting it on the root of your SD card. Um, it depends if you're using Tiramisu or Aroma. Aroma, there's a different download file that someone made. It's like a fork, I think, which is like a... It's just a different version that works for Aroma. For the Wii, I assume it's the same thing. You just slap it onto the... Well, that not the root of your SD card. It should be an app. So, like, there will be a folder called Wii U, then apps. And then I think for the Wii or the VWi, if you're using a Wii U, it's just a called apps like it's not inside the Wii U folder it's just called apps for the game I didn't even know GameCube had RetroArch no 3DS so for the 3DS I don't use it I just literally use virtual console I don't know how to do it so you might want to look elsewhere um, and then there's Steam which again you just look on Steam but the main portion of this video is showing how to set up on Windows so if you're like me or probably most other people then you're going to want to download the 32-bit or the 64-bit. Or there's even an installer. I don't know what the difference is. But, um, yeah, so I'll show you how that works uh, just, you know, in a second here. All right, so once you have installed the RetroArch, uh, well, for the installer, it should be just be as easy as running the installer and it should install it on your computer. That's probably the, the preferred method, the easier method. But if you downloaded like a 7-zip file, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a folder in your desktop called like RetroArch or something like that, like right here. And then what you want to do next is you're going to want to place the 7-zip file. That's what it looks like it is. Yeah, 7-zip archive. Now you can use any like sort of program for this, like uh, WinRAR or 7-zip. Me personally, I use 7-zip, so what you want to do is you want to right-click on it, show more options. And then extract here and it'll probably take a little bit so you're gonna have to be, be, uh, be patient but wait for it <laughs> 
Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of files, but once you have officially installed it, then you have RetroArch.exe right here, which if I were to run it, I think this is an older version of RetroArch, so it's probably going to be like weird. But let's see. Yeah, it's well, eh, no. So there you go. So then you might be wondering, well, how do I like install games? Well, the thing that I would recommend doing, well, first of all, I'm going to delete this because I already have RetroArch installed on my computer. Oh god, it's going to take a while, isn't it? Nah, okay. So, uh, me personally, I have my files in a, what do I have them? Like right here, I think, right? Alright, so as you can see, you know, you have all your files here. I have it right here. And the one thing you want to do is you want to create a folder called ROMs, R-O-M-S. And then you want to name the folder whatever you want. I, it would be smart to name it after the console. But let's say you're uh, getting like a NES game. So what you want to do is find somehow get the file for the game. Um, let's just say there are many different ways you could do it. Of which I can't go over in this video but you put the file in here and then once you've done that what you want to do is so let's open our retro arch here so well I forgot that I have it like this so I'm gonna have to like hold on a second all right so I just wanted to get rid of that because that looked a little confusing so Literally what you want to do is you want to go to I believe it's just the main menu Or no, it's here import content. This is not possible. I think via the steam version I don't think this is a menu on the steam version There is like a place for it on the steam version But I think it's just easier just to go on the website and download it from there. So Literally all you have to do is go to well, you can do all these different ways I usually use manual scan to start off and then like when I'm adding different games to them then I'll use like auto scan or scan directory but manual scan I think is just if you want to add a new one so let's say um, all right uh, remove so now Mario is not there so uh, basically what you want to do I don't know what that was sorry you want to do manual scan and oh yeah one thing you're gonna want to go to i believe settings yeah settings go to directory and then you basically just want to go uh start directory and put it in that folder you made called roms that's it so then you want to go back here manual scan and then content directory you know like nes right and then system name whatever um custom name system uh, custom system name and uh, oh here you go system name so this one you're gonna want to select what system it is so obviously you know the one that i chose is a uh yeah an Nintendo entertainment system the default core again you just want to find it which do whatever one you want i guess We'll do that one, whatever one you think would be the best. And then do start scan. Once you've done start scan, you should see a new controller icon pop up. And then as you can see, I have my game. And if you launch it, then it should work. So you go to run and then it should work. As you can see, the game's working and you can play Mario Bros. So let's see.
So, there you go. That's how the general setup for Retro Arch should look like. Um, and if you're wondering how I brought this menu up, well, it's as simple as clicking on F1 on the computer. Um, so, I hope this, you know, helps you guys, um, you know, get Retro Arch set up, you know, you can emulate all the games you want now. Oh, excuse me, um, and, um, yeah, so... If you want any other tutorials in the future, I can make some, like, maybe how you can set up, like, you know, PlayStation or something like that, but, because there is a specific process that I set up the PlayStation emulator for certain games, I don't know if it's all of them, but, yeah, so, um, that, I think, will be it for today, so, I will see you guys in the next video that I make.